Hello, hello. Welcome back to our channel, Max and Maya Living. This is Max. This is Maya. And we live in out here on the countryside of Sweden. <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> We're back with another video. We haven't done this in a while actually yeah. and I thought we've done a few vlogs we've captured sort of the adventures that we've been on the progress that we've been on but we thought it would be a great opportunity for us to just sit down with you guys and have a little chat on how the heck we ended up here yeah how we ended up on the countryside of Sweden when I am Canadian American you are Swedish mm -hmm. Scottish having lived in Berlin London yeah and now we're both here. City kids on city, the countryside. City kids, it's, it's international. A hot mess. Which is really exciting because we are partnered and sponsored by Surfshark VPN, which is ideal for those of you who have been international or want access to international entertainment, websites, shows. For example, we lived in Canada, Mexico, and a lot of shows that were available there are not available here. Mm -hmm. So with Surfshark VPN, they allow you to sort of virtually transport into these countries without you actually leaving where you are in your comforts. So with one little click online, you can change your location from where you are to where you want to be in order to watch a show you want to watch, right? Yes. And most recently, we were watching the Euros, the football tournament that is huge worldwide, but more so in Europe at this time there was a few Swedish platforms that didn't show the games that we wanted to watch but thanks to Surfshark I was able to change my location from Sweden to the UK and then use a British platform that was showing the games that we wanted to watch so we were able to watch it thanks to Surfshark another thing that makes Surfshark stands out to its competitor is the fact that you can use one login on Surfshark on multiple devices and they are offering you 83% off which is so much <laughs> three months uh, for free if you use the promo code Max Maya, and there's a link in the info box below. What were you doing before you ended up here? Before I ended up here, I was an aspiring actor slash filmmaker. I was living in Berlin where I was doing a course on screen acting, and I was basically just on that sort of train to become more of a working consistent actor and uh, I was living in Berlin and then without going into much details about the pandemic the pandemic did manage to change our lives rapidly Every, yeah a lot of uh, us <laughs> yeah abruptly my life changed when this pandemic hit and I initially wanted to obviously be with you but I had my plane tickets to LA to spend two weeks with you but they canceled my flight and they closed the borders and I just had this instinct to get back to my family without even thinking without any reasoning it was just a feeling that I wanted to be back with my family and not locked up by myself in Germany so I hopped on a plane and went back to Sweden to be with my family quarantining I was just there didn't go anywhere and just self-isolating but with my family, which felt more comforting than being by myself. But yeah. I had no plans whatsoever. I was just there and trying to figure the next step. Yeah. I was in Los Angeles in a similar boat. I was just living by myself. Um, when all of this broke out, I was just like, oh. So I like quarantined myself because I'm like, I don't want to get any of this. I started working on my fitness, my health, and I was already on a trajectory of writing. A lot of yeah. you have asked, like, whatever happened to writing? Um, I was taking classes. I was obsessed with writing. I uh, finished my pilot script. I was looking for representation with literary agents and managers. And I found some and they asked me to like make these changes and I was so excited to do it. But then when this happened, all the offices closed down. And so I was just like kind of stuck at home with not a whole lot to do. I wasn't really motivated anymore because I'm like, what is going on in this world? Mm. And um, I got really concerned about the economy. I was like, if you crash, if you close the world down, the economy is going to crash. So I thought, take my retirement money out of this, you know, internet trading and put it in something tangible. And I didn't know what that tangible was. And I just started, I was on, you know, social media and I'm seeing on Instagram stories, Elton, my friend in Bali, like living his best life. Meanwhile, I'm locked up in my home. And uh, Sorel was in Iceland just doing her. And I'm just like, okay, if this world is really, you know, potentially coming to an end, what do I want to do? 
and I just wanted to live. So I started looking at places where I could do that while also protecting my investment. And I started looking at like, can I buy a home in Bali? You, you can lease, but you can't like own. So you can lease the land. Um, I looked in Canada, but it's like a million plus dollars Canadian. And I'm like, I don't want a 30 year mortgage because the economy, I don't trust it. And then I was like, what's going on in Sweden? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Max, go, what's going on in Sweden? How much are the homes over there? And it wasn't that I didn't have any time. I had all the time in the world because I was all of a sudden not doing anything, just being home right. by my computer. And uh, I dive into it without really questioning what Maya really wanted. I just thought it was an exciting thing to do. So I went on hemnet.se, which is the website for all listings when it comes to house, land, everything in Sweden. And they have everything there in, in terms of preferences to filter out what you want specifically and what you're looking for. So I went there and we wanted to have something close to where I'm from because I don't really have any other connections to Sweden as opposed to my family and where I'm from. So we yeah. were looking in that area and I had no experience. I had never been to a viewing of, you know, I've been to rental apartments in London for viewings, but I've never gone to look for a home to buy. Like that's such a, such huge, a huge step. So I, you know, with some help with from friends, uh, some research uh, from family, I went to these viewings and I had in mind, uh, we had a budget and we had in mind what we kind of were looking for. So I just went on looking for viewings really. And I came into this home and that was the first time I really had that good feeling that this could possibly be it. So I contacted you. And I was like, oh. Yeah, you were real. like ready to withdraw. I was like, oh, I, I was just joking. I, was, I wasn't I was I serious. I, I, was, was I didn't mean what I said. I was just curious. So he's like, well, it's this or it's something else. And I, I remember asking if he could look at a, another home because I found something else. And he's like, my, this, this is it. So you either like take it or leave it. And I'm like, damn. But so you did, you stuck. It you... took me like a day or two. Yeah. And at this point, um, we were already engaged. Yeah. So that's just like, we had, actually we got engaged in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And then I flew back in the midst of the, like, the start of the, the news of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, everything's fine. We're at like film festivals. You all need to calm down. So that was like the little backstory in, in, in a sense that we were engaged and we had at that point planned to spend a lifetime together. Yeah. I just didn't realize it was going to go in this, this way. Yeah. So even then, like when we, when I, I think when I originally was looking, I was just looking to put my investment from here over there. Yeah. And then it went from here over there to like me over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> so like I even had to like pack up all my stuff in LA, ship it to you, and then do a road trip across the US from uh, from LA to Canada. And that in itself was like, oh my God. I, I, I really don't think things through until I'm in it. And then I'm just like, what am I, where am I, where yeah. am I? I don't know, when I do things, I don't think of like, oh, I'm buying a home for like our future family. Why is that? I don't think that far ahead. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just think oh, I'm so reactive, impulsive in a sense. But you know what's so uh, like reassuring to for me to have a partner who is impulsive like that is because I am impulsive too. Yeah. And I think that everything uh, my fears in commitment relationship is that that will disappear and there won't be any impulsiveness. It will always be like static and and, and, and you are living proof that life doesn't have to be that way. And I can obviously see that there's down, like negative it's aspects of us yeah. being like impulsive. But for me, seeing a partner like that, it's one of the reasons why I love you that much, that you are impulsive and that you do without thinking so much all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because like, and and because of that, things don't hit like, when I was here the first time, like three months ago, or well, sorry, for three months, a year ago, it was mm -hmm. like, everything was fine. It wasn't until I came back this time we're pregnant and I'm like, oh. Yeah, but last year oh. was also like a lot of fun. It was like, we hadn't, hadn't seen each other for more than six months. Oh, right, roughly. right, right. And then, so when you came, it was a lot of like, it was very it was passionate. It was honeymoon. It was, everything was new. We were together. Life was like, now 
it's like it's real it's real <laughs> we're here now you know you're pregnant oh my God. and now all of a sudden all the responsibilities that comes with owning a home is being real like, on compounded with uh, for some reason I, I think it's because i am pregnant i'm way more sensitive and like like i th- I was frustrated I couldn't speak Swedish last time, but now I'm even more. I think it was mm. because I am pregnant and I'm choosing to have a home birth. Mm-hmm. And then that means I have to work with professionals. And we're on the countryside. We're not in Stockholm. We're not in any major city. So there's a language cultural barrier. And that's even making, it was making my transition very hard. Yeah, and a lot of people have told Maya that she doesn't know, she doesn't have to learn Swedish because Swedish people are generally speaking very good at English. Yeah. However, you have come across, like you have discovered that you feel like you need to integrate into the culture, the society yeah. by learning at least to understand it. You I need to speak something. You, yeah, I need to speak in order, but it's not so much that you can't survive without it. It's no, more you, so you like... No, you can. If you're living mm, in a country I agree. and there's a language... You should make an effort to learn how to speak that language. And um, yeah, so I I don't want to be that person who just isn't making an effort. And so mm. um, now I'm taking Swedish classes online and I have a really awesome teacher on Preply. If you guys are looking to learn a new language, yes, you can do those apps. Kudos to you. Uh, but interacting with a human being is very, like there is no substitute for that. Mm. So I would recommend properly. What would you say is the things that you have learned from learning a new language? Like what are the things that you need in order to get better? I think it's confidence. It's like making a fool of yourself, which I don't like doing. Like I like making things as, I don't want to say perfect, but as nice as possible. And with uh, my teacher, I didn't even realize I could speak as much Swedish as I could until he like, just started speaking Swedish to me. And then I was just like, he's like, yeah, speak Swedish. <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> I started to speak. And he just kept, he's really encouraging. He wasn't correcting me. He's like, oh, oh. and then if I didn't know a word and then he'd say, oh, this is how you say, like her say, you told me that, mm. or, like her say So actually I kept bringing that up. Her say um, That means how do you say? Yeah, her say uh breakfast frukos mm. and so i i was just like barreling through and like making sentences and i never like spoke that much even though it probably didn't make any sense it made enough sense to him though yeah and so i think that was like the hardest part just yeah. being a fool and being encouraged to be a fool yeah yeah i mean you i think that's the b- biggest barrier to cross first yeah and you Because you only speak one language, you haven't crossed that barrier that a lot of people have already no. passed, especially in Europe. Yeah. So like, you're now crossing that, and you're getting so much better already. But it's also not been easy for us, for me as a native Swedish speaker, to relay the. Because I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't know the logics behind the language. I just speak it because I've brought up speaking it. But like, you've asked certain things like, why do you say it like this, and I can't answer it. In it's also way. like couple dynamics. Yeah. It's like hard to have like the teacher student in a yeah. couple relationship. Because it's interesting because <laughs> I, I, I feel like, you know, when when you say these things about like, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I let, have, to, have to make like a fool out of myself. That's what I told you like months ago. Yeah, but then I do. And then you correct me. And yeah, so then that's I what, shut that's down. That's what I mean. Like it's the, it's the dynamic in the relationship that com- we yeah. fall into roles yeah. that doesn't. Uh, it's not conducive for like for teaching and learning which is I think something we could work on though I think that's yeah that it probably has to do with something of like egos and stuff yeah it's like power tripping yeah ego roles yeah one thing that we have learned coming to the countryside was that we came with a very romantic view of living on the countryside didn't we it was romantic slash for me survival Mm mm-hmm Like, I just wanted to be um, as independent as possible because I'm like, if, like, living in the city means you are, you're on the grid, you're on the matrix, you are dependent on the grocery stores, the uh, electric company, the water company, the hydro, you need all of these things to be operating 
in order for you to live. Mm -hmm. And if those go down, you're screwed. Yeah. And I couldn't help but feel like if any one of these motherfuckers go down, like I'm screwed. Yeah. And I was like, I need to learn how to be an adult, a capable adult who can, I don't know, make fire. <laughs> I was like yeah. thinking no, in those terms, like, yeah. like life, like hand skills. And I was like, I know nothing. Mm. I know nothing. Well, I felt like I didn't know anything at all. Like it's... Did it affect you like that? Yeah, I did. Of course. Like I feel, I felt like the the world was coming to an end. Not so, I don't think I ever thought the world was going to come to an end, but I felt like if the world comes to an end, right. yeah. the expertise that I have are not enough to sustain myself. Like just, just use an example, you know. Websites. Just, it's like... Yeah, like that's what I have. But, you know... The grocery stores were there were there were moments where people were saying that their food was gonna run out. Yeah. Like, what would I do? Nothing. Right. Like, what's my website gonna help me? Yeah. Then, however, um, going coming to the countryside, you know, watching documentaries like uh, Biggest oh, Little yeah. Farm, Kiss, Kiss the, the Ground, ground. Um, you know, the Mycelium Network, oh all these fantastic fungi, fantastic fungi. Like learning about nature, I became obsessed with it to the point where I came and I was like, I want to be like them. I want to own. A couple of bonds I want to have a big old harvest where I can grow everything, uh, not thinking that there's a lot of work and yeah. there's a lot of hurdles to get past before you can live at that level. Because we have friends who are completely self-sufficient and we know what commitment and what work and what strengths that pulls when you're doing that. Yeah. So I think I getting to know myself way better. Um, you know, I came to the countryside. I've lived in the city and I think I've, sort of put that max aside for a bit which one the city life oh, okay. max to give room for new skills like i want to be able to know how it works to grow crops i want to be able to change the oil in my car yeah i want to be able to build um like a desk things I that i had to no... learn how to compost like that yeah. was like my obs i mean it's i wouldn't say it's an obsession not anymore no, passion it's, it's, I'm, yeah yeah and you're good at it too. But like, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Like we, we came with the aspiration that we were going to like live, yeah. like go deep thinking that we're going to let leave all the things that we liked in the city aside. But I think but we've no. come to grow into a position where we feel like we can utilize uh, and, and enjoy the things that we like, like tech stuff. We love tech stuff still. We like yeah, going to the city. Yeah, I was never going to give up tech. But we there was a point where we kind of felt that no or is no, that just me i was like if anything i was buying up tech stuff oh, so i could do it on the countryside I, okay then i was on another level then where i i think i went even past to think that i was gonna put everything aside oh no i like, was i was I like I was get all my cameras it. and like things mm. together so i can but i will say i did think i was gonna be way more self-sufficient than we are mm. but like it's so much work yeah and work that we don't we are not willing to commit nor we're not willing to sacrifice other interests that we have in order to live that life or why why is it so much work for us well do you think it's like because i think we're babies still like we're like baby country folk mm. like we haven't established ourselves yet like like mowing the lawn when the tractor breaks down it's just like oh my god now you have to learn how to fix a tractor yeah or um you know, you have like uh, infestation of the harvest, and then it's like you got to get neem oil. Like, where the heck do you get neem? Amazon. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's. I think we've found a balance of honoring the perks and privileges of uh, civilization and technology. And renting while, from someone else, where you can just call a landlord when yeah, there's an issue. While also um, being responsible enough. To know how to take care of yourself if ish hit the fan. Yeah. Like now, if it did, I'm like, okay, well, we got seeds. I know how to compost. Like yeah, we have. We know how to do things. We have a well. Yeah. We know, know how to, to fix fresh water. Fix the cars on a surface level, at least to. There's some changing tires and changing oil. At least. And we haven't been here that long. No. So I think we're we're definitely gonna you know because we are by nature very curious, curious individuals yeah. that. We'll always pick things up. But also something that I've started to enjoy is to, as opposed to like growing all your cro all the crops yourself and eat everything that's from your soil, you can buy uh, stuff from neighbors who are doing that as well. Like you can... Or even instead, the grocery store. Yeah, but instead of going to the... Split it up. Yeah, but you, yeah, of course. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying that I'm fine 
in order to like my thing that I can compromise on is that instead of like maybe growing all the beets, Everything. I can go to my neighbor's limb and buy the beets. Yeah. And, and, and I know that that's coming with love. And I also, we volunteer at him and help him and he pays us with vegetables sometimes. Yeah, we which haven't has done been, it lately. No, but <laughs> that's something that I miss doing a lot. Yeah. Especially like a little tip for city folk. I would say if I could do it again, if I was living in LA, I wish I had a balcony with a garden because mm. I had such a huge balcony and I bought like plants that did nothing they look cute for instagram mm. like i wish i was planting like carrots yeah. or like lettuce or kale or just something i just you could start that anywhere yeah. renting or owning wherever you can grow where you're at you can do with where you're at so for sure we don't have like we have a lot of land people are like asking me how many acres i'm like we don't even have one acre and I'm glad because the more land you own, the more work. It's so much work. It is. It is. I have to mow that lawn every <laughs> week with a tractor, and it takes about an hour. Might not sound that much, but when it interrupts your other tasks, it it comes as a as an obstacle. I think. Like it would be funny if we did a day in the life because it's like mowing the lawn. I'm yeah. like watering the greenhouse and the plants. Yeah. Um, then there's like dishes. It's just it, owning a home, in my opinion, like being a homeowner is a job in itself mm -hmm. on yeah. the countryside. It is. And I guess that's the kind of the pros and cons when you buy a home that's affordable, like in cash. It's like, okay, you own the, the home outright, but it needs work. Always. Work. You're not just buying a home. You're also committing to maintaining that home at a certain yeah. level like but that's like, like the trade-off with cheaper homes yeah you make up with it through the time that you have mm. to spend to like getting it to a level where you're happier with where you can spend like a million i hope if you're spending a million dollars you get your dream home that you don't have to mm. grind on yeah. i hope <laughs> i mean there has been moments when both you and i are just like why didn't we just get a fully new why don't we new, just sign a lease sign a lease or, or a, like, mortgage, a mortgage mortgage and like get a whole new home that you don't there's no work but then i think this is the this is the rite of passage that we're yeah. doing now is that we've got a home that is small enough for us to learn how to do yeah. simple stuff and then who knows where we're going to be in the next five years it's certainly not big enough for a family yeah. of three even i think this could may potentially in the future be more like a summer home where we come and enjoy the summers in sweden and live somewhere else or somewhere else in sweden doesn't necessarily have to be somewhere else but like this is a very small home for a family and yeah. i think it's big enough for us to sort of but we could build like we could yeah. build a town <laughs> true <Yeah. laughs> if you look at toronto and like how close yeah. the homes are everyone's like living on top of each other yeah even that mexican this place we stayed in mexico the place in san luis potosi it was oh, yeah. it was less land yeah. than we have. You, you could literally build and a village was, here. Yeah, and it was like a little echo village of how many houses? Eight houses? There's a lot of houses. And they rented out, and they had land, they had composting, had playgrounds. And that was less, less square meters than this one. Yeah. And I thought that that was way bigger just because they've utilized the whole space. Yeah. But, but yeah. for now, I think we have, we're in a really good position because we are pregnant and we are going to have a baby and the baby has access to this, which mm. I think is like really awesome. Yeah. But in the future, I remember I was like doing yard work and I'm like, I get it. I get why people left the farms and moved to the cities. Yeah. Where everything was more like accessible and easy. Accessible. Yeah. Like I was even thinking about like how much time we would save if we could have food groceries delivered to our door. Like yeah, I was exactly. thinking about that the other day, like if I were to go online and just click on the things we needed, I could, first of all, put in a way bigger order than I normally do when I'm in the grocery store. And also I didn't, I could save two hours of going back and forth to the city to yeah. make the big, but like when we do the big shopping. And we can't even get help. Like good luck trying to have like someone, you know, come by and clean. Yeah. People aren't out here looking for work. They're out here relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's true. It's so that's a very I, that's a very valid point. Like people are out here to rest or work on their own home, not your home. Not your home, unless you can. I think there there's a lot of exchange of um, deeds or like exchange of yeah, uh, like what bartering. Do you call it? Bartering, like 
you help me do this and I'll help you do that. Like, I've seen a lot of that already, which I think is a beautiful thing. Yeah. But, but like you have also said, you have mentioned like the hard times for you is missing a community. Yeah, I do miss community. And I mean, we're, we have a small one that's, you know, it takes time though, mm. is something I know. Um, but what do you think is next after this chapter? If you were to like, you know, just dream something up. Like you, you were talking about this home? Like After this like, so say this is the chapter of like countryside living. Mm-hmm. There was city living, countryside living. What would be the next chapter? Well, I've always said that I want to live somewhere warm. I've never lived somewhere warm. Like I've never lived in. And if I were to live somewhere warm, I would probably be close to a city, but I would never live in a city, I think. like. Oh, I, you're I, done with the city. I can't live. Like if I were to live in, let's say... I would live in uh, Mexico City. Yeah. I wouldn't want to stay in the center and the core of Mexico City. I would okay. want to be within maybe I would rather put the money towards a car and do whatever, you know, collaborations or whatever I would have to do in the city. Uh, it would be trips. And then I'd come back to somewhere more calmer. So like distance wise, how far or how long? Within, within an hour. An hour. Okay. Yeah. I always said... Which is why I think Sweden is such a, a curveball for me. Because I thought after LA... Oh, I did say Europe, though. Yeah, you did I, say I said you. Europe after LA. Um, but I would like to do something warm. I don't know. I'm, I am play with the idea of, like, like south of Portugal. Mm. Like, I'm familiar with the Caribbeans. I'm familiar with, like, the Americas. I'd want to travel see more of Europe and... Uh, parts of Africa. I don't know. Mm. Part of me is thinking like some part of Africa. Mm. So somewhere warm. I don't know. I've also noticed that I'm more creative and productive than I've ever been. Ironically, so it's it's so ironic how life works. Because now when I'm on the countryside, when I'm sitting in our studio working, I'm more productive than I've ever been living in the cities. But now I'm craving like the community, yeah. the collective that I had when I was living in the city. But I wasn't productive. I wasn't putting in the hours that I'm doing now. Mm. So I, I I think one reason why I mean why I'm putting in the hours is because I have my base that I've so long haven't had, but now my issues and my struggles is that I don't have people like minded people within the reach to just go and meet up with. I think yeah and that's something that I miss and would want to have to change if if I could. Let us know in the comments below if you could do it. If you did a do-over or the next chapter, what does that chapter look like? Is it city, country, beach? <laughs> Whatever it is. And don't forget to subscribe. And hit that bell to turn the <laughs> notifications on. <laughs> See ya. We see us. We see us not. We see us not. Young body, Sveria. Men yog er from Canada. Men yog bor i. Los Angeles. Past tense. How do you say that again? Yogbode. Yogbode. Yeah. E. USA. Yeah.